right, all right, all right, YouTube. So I got a call for this Kandinsky Nuts walking box not running. Oh, the clicker. Clicker of death. So, let's check out these start components here. All right, so this one here just has a start cap and a current relay. And I'll show you here on the schematic. That'll come in. So you got a start capacitor and a current relay. And that's it on this one. Looks like we got a bad start capacitor. Look at there. It's supposed to be 124 to 149. Let's see if I got one on the van. All right, I got that little bugger changed out. Let's see if we're a hero or a zero. Let's see. Oh, zero still. See if we can run it off the star cord. Goner. She will not start. All right, goner. Okay, so my parts house doesn't have the compressor in stock. That was 4,100 BTUs. Uh, they got a 55 condensing unit in stock, and we're just going to grab the condensing unit. I don't even know if this old condensing unit was bolted down. Nope. Look at that. Crazy. All right. That's what we're up to. All right, we got the dirt later going. The, uh... The refrigerant on that one did not smell too good. I don't know if I have an acid checker or not. I'm going to take a look. It was not smelling good, let me tell you. Possible burnout. I'm going to take this off to see if it's any easier to get to the retaining nut on the electrical. I've double checked with my meter to make sure the switch was a two pole because it looked like a single pole switch. Um, so those are all dead. Let's see. Yeah. So this one doesn't even have the retaining that it's the it's the push-in style on that flex connector. The little darts. Yeah, let me get I gotta get my flashlight. My poor eyeballs. one in the back. Always the last one. Ta-da! A lot of this one, the old one was flared. The new one's going to be sweat.
chop it so it's like right here in the middle. You gotta do a repipe. A little bit of some repiping. Yeah, that's it. You should be free willy at that point. cleaning under there. go to the old school right here. Ooh, took some of the gloves. So, all right, another NorCal tip of the day. All right, so I haven't bolted, bolted down the canasting unit yet, especially on this one, because I need to make this braze down here eventually. I'm gonna use my tape measure as a kickstand, put the canasting unit up on the tape measure, put my wet rags around down here so I don't catch none of the wood on fire. And it'll give me, it'll be raised up so I can get to the bottom of it. Um, we'll do that here in a sec. All right, so these are the swedging tools I've been using. They're from Amazon. It just says Tool PX Copper Swedging. Copper Widening Tool. And so I'm gonna make a swedge in the half inch with these. Uh, they go right to the impact. They're on Amazon. I'll try and put a link below. Ready for action. Let's see if I can get the camera in here where you guys can see what it's gonna look like. Let's try that.
let the cars through. I'll show you the little where I'm working here in a minute. <laughs> That's my plan of attack here. See if I got some insulation on the truck. I'll weld this one first and I'll slide a piece of insulation back if I got some on the truck. All right, I'm getting my nitrogen purge set up. You can hear it. I'm gonna run it through the high side and then it'll come out the low side. And then we'll get ready to make this first weld here. And all the liquid line ones too. We'll let that build up some pressure through there. It's gonna take a little bit of time. It's gonna go out through the evaporator coil, come back and then back out right here. It's already coming. Listen to this. So, let's see, I'll borrow one of these real quick. I'll protect that sight glass. You gotta wrap those Emerson sight glasses. Or they have the potential to leak. It'll say it on there too. show you guys the walk-in box here after we get everything going here so you can hear the wet rag heating up sizzle sizzle and schnizzle the insulation on probably screw the unit down yeah it looks good I don't think the sunglass got hot there
I like to cool the pipe off so I don't burn myself as I keep working. That's the main reason I like to, to cool everything off. Too many burns on the arms over the years. That's where all the heat went. Right to the to the steel fortress. I'm gonna turn my braze off for a minute, my purge, so I can take this joint apart so I can slip my insulation back. All right, I got my insulation slid on. I checked that weld with the mirror real good. And let me turn this back on. And we'll make that last weld. I'll get some foam tape on that liquid line, get that strap on there, and then we can run a nitrogen pressure test. Well, I gotta hook up the low pressure control. Then we'll run a nitrogen pressure test. Dur, 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 dur. So we're pressurized here, let's see, give it a sec. Yeah, we're doing, we're flowing. Got some oil in there in that suction line. See the flameage? There we go. In the flow ski, bro ski. There it is. One little fillet on this end might make me feel better. There. I got this little bugger on the vacuum pump and I still need to tidy up my insulation a little bit and then we'll weigh the charging but look where I'm working at today Watch this. there's the ocean right at the end of the street there isn't that nice and I'm right here going for it so that's it tighten the box uh, thermostat solenoid valve all right so the box the box is super tiny it's 58 59 degrees in there I've weighed in one pound of gas let's turn this thing on and see what happens all right here we go major load on her so here we go yeah the section pressure is dropping because I'll be low on charge Let's see I'm gonna let it run for a bit it, I don't think this unit's gonna take a, a whole lot of gas there goes my iPhone goofing up again that'll be the second time the camera unit's gone out in this goofy thing when it tries to focus it gets squirrely right now all right so I got this thing running I got the charge to where it's a full charge the box is probably 48 or 50 degrees right now they keep going in and out of it it's hilarious uh, one thing I noticed because the box is hot I got no compressor superheat right now the TXV is wide open it hasn't throttled down yet and I bet if we if we dig in there and take a good look, I bet you that evaporator coil is filthy. No doubt about it. So we're getting we're getting too much liquid back to the compressor. We want a minimum of 20 degrees compressor superheat. There we go, we're at nine, eight. See it's dancing all over the place. The box is pulling down because it's got a big old load on it. So we'll let it we'll let it settle down and then we'll take a look. But I got a feeling the evaporator coil is filthy. 
I gotta get I gotta get my face behind there and take a sniff. All right, this is where I'm at. So I got this turned off. I could tell I was getting super low compressor, super heat. Uh, it was just telling me right to my face, "Hey, your evaporator's dirty, dude, and this thing is is." filthy so i'm in operation cleanup mode right now i'm gonna take the fan off clean the fan guard clean the fan get the back scrub the crap out of this thing and see if we get a better airflow across that evaporator coil so there's the fan blade it's good and dirty my iphone's on acid again maybe this will help it out and uh, we'll get that clean and then in here I'm going to try and uh, scrub it from both ways, from the front and from the back. See how we make out here. All right, I just cleaned the crap out of this thing, front and back. Let's see how we do. All right, so I did the big old scrub of ski on the evap coil. I just got this thing restarted, and it's cruising along here. And the TXV's uh, wide open because the box is hot. But at least the the super heat's hanging in there a little bit. It's gonna do the dance. They just opened the door and went inside there. Watch this. I know it. Because that box is so small. Yeah, he was in the box cleaning. Look, now we're back up to 16.5. Oh, iPhone, you're dying on me. We're heading in the right direction. And it's and it's uh, stable now. Cause that coil's clean. We're almost there. Might have to adjust the valve a little bit, but let's let it get closer to set point and see how we do here. So that box is uh, right now. It's at 52 degrees. I got a 31 degree evaporator because it's got a big load on it. As it pulls down, it'll get down to a 20 degree evaporator as the load comes off that box. So I think it, this thing's gonna be. It's looking all right. It's looking good. Liquid line's not hot at all. Feels good, even with the monster load on it. So I'm stoked. Stoke, stokefied. Super heat keeps climbing on me, which is good. It's getting up there, 16.9, 17. We're heading in the right direction. Looking for that 20 degrees minimums. I think we're going to get there. Because that TXV is wide open right now because of the load on the box. Oh, we're so close. 18.2. Getting there. What's my? Let's see what the evaporator temperature is now. Yeah, 30.5. So that's going to come down as uh, and it jumps up on me a uh, tenth of a degree. Um, as the box keeps cooling. So, we're heading in the right direction. Yeah, look at that, almost 19 degrees compressor. Now this, I'm reading uh, compressor superheat. I got my probe here on the section line. So we're looking for 20 degrees minimums from Copeland. So, it's to make sure we're not flooding back. Here we are at 19, 19 degrees superheat. Almost there. Yeah, she's gonna be all right as, as the uh, box temps comes down and the TXV throttles down. See, it's, it's playing a little game right now and they're in and out of the box. And we're still, let's see what our EVAP temp is. Yeah, 29.7, so it's coming down. All right, on that one there, that was a good one. Um, just a simple compressor superheat reading. You know, it's telling me that evaporator coil was filthy and it was plug -o pretty good, pretty damn good. I, I had to do a mega scrub out and clean up on that thing. And then you can, I don't know if you saw before, but I went from zero superheat to cleaning the evaporator coil and then getting a good reading and then getting right in the wheelhouse and then as the box dropped it got right in there let you guys look at the beach put my camera sideways look at that huh so 
mean, that was drastic changes showing what a dirty evaporator coil does to a little refrigeration system. So, I, and what it was doing to me was I had zero degree superheat, then it would it would play around like three degrees, two degrees, zero degrees. Then I deep cleaned the coil, dried it out, blew it out nitrogen, let the fan run for a bit, dried it out good to try and get any latent load off of that coil. And then you can see at the end there, it was uh, working like it's supposed to. So, uh, hey, like, hit the like button if you haven't. Take a second, smash that like button for me. Let's see if we could get uh, how many likes we could get on a video one time. That'd be kind of cool. And if you haven't yet, hit the subscribe. And if you haven't, hit the bell and get notifications when I'll post up a new video. You never know what I might post up. It could be some silly fun stuff or it could be some good refrigeration HVAC stuff. All right, I'll catch you guys on the next one.